In this session, we will discuss a name-based theorem. We will go through the algorithm and a problem with respect to this. So let's first understand the concept of name-based theorem. Now, name-based theorem is one of the types of Bayesian learning theorem or algorithm. Basically, it, is, it can be used for both binary classification as well as for multi-class classification and it is a supervised learning algorithm and it is based upon the principle of Bayesian theorem. So this we can use, we can use Nebes theorem to classify data sets where the features are independent and each feature is assumed to be given equal weightage and it works very well for larger data set and as well as it is very fast. So each feature here, since this is a Bayes theorem where we are, where it is based upon the probability concept, here each feature will contribute a probability value which is independently during the classification. And it has lot of applications. You can use Nave Bayes for text classification, recommendation systems, you can use it for face recognition and many more. So let's learn the algorithm. So Nave Bayes, this is the algorithm of Nave Bayes theorem. First you need to compute the prior probability. What is prior probability, posterior probability, what is likelihood probability please refer my previous video on Bayesian learning so first step is you have to compute the prior probability the second step is you have to compute frequency matrix and likelihood probability for each of the feature and the third uh, step is you have to use a base theorem now what is base theorem we have, I have explained in the last class so just a simple uh, formula again this is a formula for calculating the uh, for the base theorem using this we have to calculate the probability of all the hypothesis so this is probability of hypothesis H given evidence E this is a posterior probability that is equal to probability of evidence evidence E given hypothesis H, this is a likelihood probability into probability of hypothesis H, this is the prior probability divided by probability of evidence E is also the prior probability. So basically posterior probability is equal to likelihood probability into prior probability of hypothesis H divided by prior probability of evidence E. Now fourth step you have to find the maximum a posterior hypothesis. So last class again we discussed what is MAP hypothesis or HMAP. Basically this is uh, used to find which is the most probably probable hypothesis from a total set of hypothesis. So you have a to so set of hypothesis from that you have to select which is the most probable hypothesis so then you have to go for HMAP so HMAP is used to classify the test object to the hypothesis with the highest probability and this is a formula for calculating HMAP so it's basically the it's going to choose a maximum hypothesis a hypothesis which is most probable so probability of hypothesis H given evidence E which is equal to probability of evidence E given H into probability of H divided by probability of E now let's see a problem on this so this is a given table training data set for a student's performance we have to apply your Nebes algorithm and we have to predict whether a student would get the job offer or not okay so first step as I said so write down the keep the table uh, input table so first step is you have to compute the prior probability now what is our target feature our tar target feature is job offer which is in the last column so this is a job offer for the last column which is the target feature we have to find the prior probability so prior probability for job offer s is how many s are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 out of total 7 so prior probability for job offer s is 7 by 10 find the prior probability for job offer no so that would be the remaining 3 by 10 now step 2 is you have to find the frequency matrix and prior probability for job offer so this is uh, you have to find the mac frequency matrix so what is frequency matrix is you write a table you write since I am now finding frequency matrix for job offer right job offer that is classes are s and no how many instances are there there are 7 s and 3 no so what is the probability value probability of job offer s is 7 by 10 probability of job offer no is 3 by 10 so this is the frequency matrix next step is now you find the frequency matrix and prior probability for every attribute which is in the table so how many attributes we have CGPA interactiveness practical knowledge communication skills so for all the four individually you need to compute frequency matrix and prior probability 
let's now focus on the first feature the first feature is CGPA so this is step 2a find the frequency matrix for CGPA find the likelihood probability for CGPA so frequency matrix for CGPA is what take the table okay so let's uh, take the let's take the table so from this table right what are the different values of CGPA which are possible greater than equal to 9 greater than equal to 8 and less than 8 so write that okay the different uh, values that CGPA has and for each one how many times you got job offer S yes, and how many times you give, got job offer no you have to write so if you uh, refer the training data set for yes uh, for greater than equal to 9 CGPA how many times I got job offer S yes, this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 and how many times I didn't get job offer even though CGPA was greater than 9 here there is 1 that's it so it is 3 and 1 right similarly for greater than or equal to CGPA how many times job offer was yes how many times the job offer was no you have to write similarly like for less than 8 then you find the total so this is our frequency matrix for CGPA next you find the likelihood probability so likelihood probability is write down all the three different values of CGPA again make a column for probability of job offer equal to S and job offer equal to no we have discussed what is likelihood probability in the last session on Bayesian learning concepts so it is nothing but probability of CGPA greater than or equal to 9 given the job offer is yes so how many times when CGPA was greater than or equal to 9 how many times you got yes 3 so 3 divided by total what is the total here for job offer yes how many offers were yes 7 it is not 10 here that you have to be careful it is 3 by 7 it is not 3 by 10 that 7 because number of job offers yes was only 7 similarly when CGPA was greater than or equal to 9 job offers were no so that is 1 divided by 3 similarly you do for all the second two values so probably this is nothing but likelihood probability what is the meaning probability of CGPA greater than or equal to 8 given the offer was yes the next last one is probability of CGPA less than 8 given the job offer was yes that is equal to 0 by 7 similarly you do for no so basically what we have done here is we have found the likelihood probability so this is likelihood probability which we just learned which is nothing but probability of evidence E given the hypothesis so basically it tells how likely the occurrence of evidence E, e evidence has happened given the parameters so once you find the likelihood probability right next again you would repeat this entire step for the next attribute the next attribute is interactiveness so find the frequency matrix interactiveness if you refer the input table there were just two values yes and no so how many times you got job offer yes how many times you got job offer no you note down and take the total next find the likelihood probability similarly just like the previous one right interactiveness yes then how many times you got probability of job offer yes and this is probability of job offer no this is the likelihood probability so basically here you have to write probability of interactiveness is equal to yes given job offer is equal to yes here probability of interactiveness is equal to yes given job offer is equal to no similarly do for the second row so looking at the input data set you have to fill up both these tables okay so this is a frequency matrix table and this is a likelihood probability table similarly do for practical knowledge the third attribute frequency matrix table and the likelihood probability uh, probability table similarly do for the last attribute that is communication skills right communication skills let's just go through how many fact uh, values are they good moderate poor right so there are three values write it down how many times you got job offer yes for good how many times you got job offer no for good similarly do for all take the table now write the likelihood probability write down all the communication skills in the first column the second column will be probability for job offer yes third one is probability for job offer no next you write what is the probability of communication skills is equal to good given job offer is equal to yes now how will you write this communication skills is good and job offer should also be yes so this is one and then how many you have here two three four so you write four divided by seven why seven because total number of yes is seven
similarly do for the last one probability of communication skills is equal to poor communication skills is equal to poor but still you got job offer so how many are there none right so therefore this is zero let's see this probability of communication skills is poor but no job offer so there's one there's two so it is two divided by three because total number of job offers no is three so this is how you have to write frequency matrix and likelihood probability for every attribute. Now what is a step 3 is you have to now use the Bayes theorem to find the probability of all the hypotheses. Okay. Now in the question they will ask they have they will they will they have to ask this as a question, right? So using the Bayes theorem they are asking the question classify whether the given student gets the job offer or not for this test data so this should be there in the question okay so this is the test data given so when CGPA is greater than or equal to 9 interactiveness is S practical knowledge is average communication skills is good you have to tell whether the student will get job offer or not so write it down okay so when CGPA is greater than or equal to 9 you have to write the probability you, you have to now use the base theorem here this is our base theorem so probability of job offer is equal to yes for the given test data it is equal to probability of CGPA greater than or equal to 9 given the job offer s yes, into probability of interactiveness is equal to yes given the job offer s yes, into probability of practical knowledge is equal to average given the job offer s yes, into probability of communication skills is equal to geared given the job offer x s yes. into this this what was this this is nothing but the likelihood probability into probability of job offer is equal to yes this is the prior probability divided by probability of test data what have I done here? I have just used the test data and applied the base theorem on the given test data. Now, I can neglect my denominator because it is common for all. So, it will give you the same probability value. So, I will just neglect the denominator and I have rewritten this whole thing. So, this has been written, the whole thing has been copied again, but I have ignored the test data. Okay, now write down the values for each one. What is the probability of CGPA greater than or equal to 9 when job offer is? Yes? We just found it now, right? Go back. We have done the CGP. Go back to the CGPA table. In the CGPA table, probability of greater than equal job offer greater than or equal to 9 when job offer is yes is 3 by 7. So come back and fill it up here. Okay, 3 by 7. So the first one is 3 by 7. Let's do the second one. What is the probability of job offer equal to yes when interactiveness is yes? So go back to the where, to the interactiveness attribute. Where is interactiveness attribute? It's here. So brought it is the probability. It is 5 by 7. Probability that interactiveness is yes given the offer is yes is 5 by 7. So like this you are just looking into the previous likelihood probability table that you computed fill up this so you have computed the likelihood probability for a just fill up this no this is not this one this one okay so I have filled up the right hand side using the likelihood probability I am, I am getting the probability that job offer is yes for the given test data as 0 0.0175 now we have to repeat this entire thing for job offer as no. I have just repeated the whole thing for other case job offer is no. So just repeat the same thing write the base theorem apply the base theorem for the test data. The only difference is now I made the job offer as no. The test data remains the same. So probability the job offer is no for the given test data that is test data is probability of CGPA greater than or equal to 9 given job offer is no into the interactiveness is as given job offer is no like this for practical knowledge then for communication skills divided by probability of test data. Similarly now I am going to neglect the probability of test data. I am going to neglect the denominator and just write the numerator as it is. Okay. Now again find all these values from the likelihood table that you did for each attribute. For each attribute you develop, you had done a likelihood table, just copy those values. So you get the probability as 0 0.0074. I will just see the, let's see this, like maybe the last one. Probability that 
communication skills is good but still no job offer let's look into this value so go back to the communication skills yes it's here probability that communication skills is good but no job offer so the value is 1 by 3 right so come back see I have filled here 1 by 3 here so fill up all these five values looking into your likelihood probability which we have done for each attribute okay so now I'm getting the probability that the job offer is no is 0 0.0074 so what have you got when job offer is yes the probability is 0 0.0175 for job uh, for no it is 0 0.0074 so now step 4 use a maximum a posterior hypothesis that is H map to classify whether the test object to the hypothesis with the highest probability what is H map as I told you this is used to find from a set of hypothesis we are going to select the most probable hypothesis so which is the most probable hypothesis here see probability of job offer is equal to s test data has the highest probability right 0. Point, see this 0. 0.0175 is greater than 0. 0.0074 therefore you it means the for the, the test data is classified as job offer is equal to yes okay so that means for the given test data the student is going to get the job offer so that would be our conclusion okay so that's it for today's session any doubt please let me know in the comment box and thank you so much and please subscribe to the channel thank you